the first uh, topic over here is carbon border adjustment mechanism so the carbon border adjustment tax has been proposed by eu and it will come into force from 2026 and initially it will be applied to five sectors the five sectors are electricity iron and steam fertilizer aluminium and cement this is going to ne negatively impact indian industry because nearly 17 percent of total indian exports goes to eu this is data from 12 to 2021 Around 6% of these exports will fall under the purview of CBAM. So the most impacted industry from the Indian exports is going to be iron and steel sector followed by aluminium. Now the developing countries are opposing this because it's going to be a discriminatory practice and it will result in market distortions. Also imposing carbon tax goes against the UN principle of common but differentiated responsibilities and respective capabilities because the developing countries have different capacities as compared to the developed ones. The second topic is the climate change performance index. It is released by the German watch that is the new climate institute and climate action network. Now about the climate change performance index so it tracks the climate protection performance of 59 countries and this 59 countries plus the European Union makes up for the 92% of the generated global greenhouse gas emissions. Change performance index measures countries performance in four categories. The four categories are uh, greenhouse gas emissions, renewable energy, energy use and climate policy. So climate policy, energy use and renewable energy takes 20-20% share each and global health Greenhouse gas emissions takes 40% of the weightage. What are the key findings? The key finding is that India has been ranked 8th. It has risen 2 spots since last year. So last year we will have the rank of 10th. India has got a high rating in greenhouse gas emissions and energy use. As we know that energy use in India per capita is very low. And uh, it has been ranked medium in climate policy and renewable energy. So according to this climate change performance index, India lags behind in policy and renewable energies. Denmark and Sweden has been ranked as the top performer. China has been ranked 51th and US has been ranked 52. If we look at the components of CCPI, it goes like the next topic is India's objection to Coroniva joint work on agriculture. So basically this is an outcome document from the Fiji COP23 of UNFCC and uh, the joint work is going to address six related topics. The topics are soil, nu nutrient use, water, livestock, method for addressing adaptation and socio-economic and food security. So basically these are the things that they want to address in the Coroniva joint works on agriculture. India's opposition to the discussion is that they don't want any reference to emissions from agriculture because it is not a luxury emission but a survival emission for the poor. Let's move on to Dynamic Growth Groundwater Resource of India Report 2022. This has been released by Jal Shakti Ministry. So what are the key findings? So the key findings of the report are that groundwater recharge has increased by 1.29 billion cubic meters. Also. The annual extractable groundwater resource has also increased by 0.56 billion cubic meters. Whereas the extraction for irrigation, domestic and industrial use has decreased by 5.76 billion cubic meters during this period, which is 2021 to 2022. The major consumers of groundwater is agriculture, which is for irrigation use. Like 87% 80 of the total annual groundwater extraction is for irrigation use only. And the rest 13%, which is equivalent to 30.69 billion cubic meters, is for industrial consumption and domestic use. Also, there has been a demarcation in the categorization in the state-wise groundwater extraction, wherein Haryana, Punjab and Rajasthan as states and Dadar and Nagar Haveli and Daman and Diu have extraction levels of more than 100%. In Delhi, Tamil Nadu, Uttar Pradesh, Karnataka, Union Territory of Chandigarh, as well as Lakshadweep and Pondicherry, the groundwater extraction is between 60 to 100%. So it is stressed, kind of stressed. In rest of the states, the groundwater extraction is below 60%. Now, how much water can, is extractable will depend on the rock formations. So we have two different major types of rock formation. One is porous formation and the other one is fissure formations. Porous formations example will be an allu alluvial formations which is basically found in Indo-Gangetic Brahmaputra basin. They have high specific yield and good repositories of groundwater. Whereas fissure formations which is occupying nearly 66% of the geographical area of the country is mostly limited to weathered joint and fractured portions of the rocks. 
So let's move on to plastic waste management program. This is basically UNDP is implementing plastic waste management program in India. Now there are two basic pillars of this program. The first one is Swachhata Kendras and second one is Safai Sathis. Safai Sathis are the waste pickers. Swachhata Kendras are the material recovery centers from for sustainable practices in waste management. The objectives are to create a model. This sector of economy which is waste material collection can go from informal to formal economy. What are the achievements of the project till date? Basically 20 two material recovery centers which are Swachhata Kendras have been established across the country in 36 cities. Also the plastic collected and processed so far has crossed 66,000 metric tons. One of the achievements of the program is also that they have been able to implement financial inclusions of Safai Sathis by linking them to social protection schemes. The drawback here is that 70% of the Safai Sathis belong to social backward groups and they have no formal education. Also, they lack access to caste or occupation certificate. And these are kind of necessary for when you want to get employment from the government sector. They want to, what they want to do is, they want to achieve a formal economy for the waste system, waste management system, and they want to also institutionalize the Swachhata Kendras. Let's move on to regenerative agriculture. A report by IPCC, which is named Climate Change and Land by IPCC, uh, it has em emphasized the importance of regenerative agriculture. What is So it is basically a holistic farming system. We want to reduce the chemical fertilizer use and pesticide use. We want to reduce the tillage. Also, we want to integrate livestock and we want to use cover crops. Now, what is the need for regenerative agriculture? Uh, the major reason is that there is soil degradation. Also, according to this report, there may not be enough soil to feed the world in the next 50 years. What are the benefits of a regenerative agriculture? Regenerative agriculture can improve crop yield. How it is going to achieve that? By improving the health of the soil, ability to retain water, as well as reducing soil erosion. Regenerative farming can also reduce emissions from agriculture and they can turn cropland pastures into carbon sinks. So we also want to create carbon sinks. It will also result in efficient use and fewer pests because greater biodiversity will make the land more resilient. According to a Lancet report, 43% of world's river are contaminated with a pharmaceutical ingredients in concentrations that have disastrous ramifications for health. So uh, the problem here is that the pharmaceutical industry often is incapable of filtering out the chemical compounds and these chemicals usually are discarded during the manufacturing process and they seep into the surroundings of freshwater systems. Now all this is concerned with pharmaceutical pollution. What is the status of pharmaceutical pollution in India? Bas uh, as we know that the pharmaceutical industry in India is one of the major industries in the world, one of the major industries of pharmaceutical So what is the status of pharmaceutical pollution in India? We all know that India is one of the largest producers of pharmaceuticals. It is basically the third largest producer of pharmaceuticals. It has been estimated that about 60,000 newborns die annually in India because of multi-drug resistant infections. 